Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Syngenta Canada. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today, I am at the Allura Research Station catching up with Ontario Soybean Specialist, Horace Bonner. Horace, how are you doing? Very well. Always a pleasure to work with yeah. you, Bern. And um, it's cold, which is a it's strange... Cold this morning, yep. It is a strange day here in Ontario, uh, right in the middle of the summer. And, uh, you know, but I'm, but I'm sure it's going to warm up here. Um, one thing I want to talk to you about today, nitrogen. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, can we impact soybean yield with nitrogen? A big conversation there. Let's start um, where you and I have talked a lot in the past, and that is that starter effect. We can make an impact there. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, and as you mentioned, we have before talked about the relatively small impact, two, three, sometimes if, if you're lucky, four bushels. But what we want to talk about today is not that starter effect. We want to hit on something with respect to really high yielding beans. Yeah. Now, before we get there, um, let's talk about some things that we need to consider. What about lodging? How much in can you add before we get into a lodging situation? Right, right. Well, you can see in this experiment here, we've tried just 50 pounds. Again, that's that springtime versus 200 pounds, which uh, of actual N, and that is to try and feed the whole crop, that 200 pounds along with what's already in the soil. And you can see that the 50 pounds is fine here. The 200 pounds, we are definitely starting to see some lodging. The other thing though that you really should be aware of, and if you can see this, uh, it's pretty clear right here that variety has more to do with it than actual nitrogen. This variety over here, lodging like crazy. This one over here, not at all. Neither one of those had any nitrogen, mm -hmm. right? What about nodulation? Do we risk inhibiting nodulation yeah. if we push nitrogen rates? For sure, we got to be aware of that, that metabolically, of course, it's cheaper to use um, commercial N in terms of the soybean plant versus fixing nitrogen from the air, right? What's available, the, the nitrates in the soil. And so it, you can quickly inhibit the number that we use is about 50 pounds of actual is fine. And I'd like to show you right here in this plot, you know, as we're digging up these roots, let's look at the nodules. This plot had 50 pounds and you can see beautiful nodulation right here. Now, let's look at the one where we put 200 pounds down and you'll see right here, there are some nodules, but not nearly as many. And in some cases, uh, in some of these experiments, we have hardly any with the 200 pounds. Mm. So the answer is about 50 pounds. We feel quite confident that you're not inhibiting enough of the nodulation or end fixation to hurt the crop. Yeah. Now we continue to chase the nitrogen question because you know I often hear about hidden hunger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. is there a hidden hunger? Obviously, as a researcher, you know, you're sort of always pursuing: can mm -hmm. we push um, soybeans? With nitrogen. Well, absolutely. Now, there's some really neat data. This is from 100 site years out of the U.S. trials that were done to try and answer uh, the question of when do soybeans start to really need some extra fertilizer. And what you'll see on this chart, the bottom line is that there are 80, 90 pounds available from the soil. That's just naturally what's what's left over in the soil. And then that next line, you can see that's end fixation from the air. You put those two together and absolutely there's a sufficient amount of nitrogen for the crop until about 60 bushels. And you'll see that break right there at the 60 bushel mark and that's where it starts to spread. And by 80 bushels, according to this data, we're missing at least 30 pounds of N. So here's the point you can't visually see that. And we have some good experimental data now that shows there is a hidden hunger, there is a yield, yield lag once you start to get into higher yield situations, and it's a surprisingly big number. Now, Horace, we're over here in some plots, and uh, this, these are some good looking beans. Are these deficient? Oh, it's a beautiful looking crop. And we have, we have seven of these trials across the province this year. And what we're testing is not only nitrogen fertilizer, but some other good stuff. 
to answer your question, are these deficient? Do they look deficient? No. They don't. They look awesome, awesome. right? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. La the last number of years, we have a good data set now that suggests in Ontario, we're absolutely deficient, even though visually you can't see it. Yeah, so these look good, but there's hunger. That's the interesting part. And there's a bigger hunger than we might have thought. So this chart here clearly shows this is some omission trials that we did, nine site years. You know, we tried fungicide, we tried P and K, boron, sulfur, a bunch of other good things in fields that were not clearly deficient for P and K. That's, that's very important to note here. These were good fields, similar to here. One of these trials was here. Look at what we lost when we removed nitrogen fertilizer from six bushels. And again, this is the really neat part. I would not have expected this. Nothing visual to see there, but we lost six bushels. Right. And so the hidden hunger is real burn and we got to figure out yeah. how to fill it. Now, um, to your point, it's real, it's here. How do you address it? Yeah, right. And so the, that's why we have these trials. So we have some foliar feeding products. Yeah. We have some nitrogen fertilizer that we already talked about, some slow release, pure, pure yield and urea. We mix those two to, together. And then what's kind of new are these biologicals. So we have Utricia and, and Vita in these trials. And of course, the idea is that these bacteria, these endophytes actually establish in the leaves, right? Not in, on the roots, but in the leaves and fix nitrogen from the air again. And so that's what we're trying here. Now, Horst, you know, you've seen some amazing beans here. And I know you said you are seeing something here. Mm -hmm. What can we expect to hear from you this winter? Are you going to have some trial, trial results for us? Yeah, absolutely. We've got some, some nice data. Um, and, of course, yield is what really matters. So we'll wait on that. But already what we do have, we took tissue samples to assess how much nitrogen is in the plant. And we are seeing a little boost where we applied these biologicals. That's kind of neat. Now we'll, we'll see, you know, you need multi-year data to know whether that's real. And we did have a little, uh, a little hint from some of the trials we did last year that there may be some extra bushels for, for these biologicals, but let's wait and see. Mm -hmm. Uh, this winter we'll be, uh, we'll be talking awesome. about that. Well, hey, yeah. always great to have you on the Soybean School. Appreciate your time, and we'll be listening this winter. Absolutely. It's been fun. Thank you. <laughs>